going on, Sean? Give a few minutes for people to pile in here and we're going to go over, uh, got a, quite a bit of stuff to go over with tonight and uh, also going to be going over a big uh, Christmas giveaway that we're doing. Uh, it's an awesome prize pack uh, valued at about 250, 300 bucks that we're going to be giving away to one lucky uh, recon angling uh, viewer. So uh, we'll be showing off kind of what we're giving away. Uh, at the very end of the show. What's going on, David? And, uh, well, that sounds like fun. What's going on, Ryan? Uh, so we'll, we'll do that at the end of the show, but uh, for those of you guys that are watching right now, uh, go ahead and like, comment, and share the live video to uh, get an extra entry um, into the drawing here. So, what's going on, Eric? So we're going to give it a few more minutes. We're going to go over uh, a cool new uh, hut that Frable came out with this year called the Frable Fortress. Uh, it's a three-man hub shelter. Um, it's, it's pretty cool. I got it yesterday. Um, so shout out to Frable. Um, they make some pretty cool gear. Uh, they've been in the ice fishing business uh, for a long time. And, uh, this hub shelter, uh, I've really liked it. I've, I've kind of added a few of my necessities for shelters, um, some accessories that, that, that they make um, that I go ahead and uh, put in the shelter, which makes it a little life a little easier when you're, uh, when you're out on the ice, helps you uh, be a little more organized. And then um, the light bar that's in there um, definitely helps in low light situations. Um, what's going on, Larry? Uh, so, uh, like I said, go ahead and like, comment, and share. Um, got a lot of cool, got a lot of cool stuff, uh, a lot of cool products and stuff to show you guys. Uh, also, going to show you some hot lures that have been working great uh, for ice fishing this year. Um, I've been catching some nice fish through the ice. Um, so, so far this year, I've uh, ice fished in Colorado, um, uh, part of Utah, and. Idaho and Wyoming so uh, been a pretty fun ice season so far and uh, is I'm gonna be going up to Montana later on this year to Fort Peck in February I'm looking forward to that trip but uh, <clears throat> we're gonna go ahead uh, and I think we're just gonna go ahead and start with the live video here and we're gonna start off first we're just kind of I'm gonna do a walkthrough with you guys of the new Frable of the new Frable Fortrex or Fortress sorry and um what's going on jason so this is the outside of the frable fortress and uh we're just going to kind of we're just going to kind of kind of walk you through uh the hut real quick so you know most of us now just a zip has a little placard here for you so uh, those of you guys in the Midwest that can leave your huts overnight um, can put your name, address, and stuff in there. Um, a nice little Velcro, easy access. You got your windows here. Um, so this is a hub shelter with an expandable, expandable base. Or not expandable, but just an expanded base. So come on inside, and you can see it's got four four windows. You can see there's, there's a lot of room on this fortress. So you can have one guy here, one guy over here. Uh, you can fit up to three guys, maybe even four in here. There's plenty of room. Um, as you can see, I'm six foot one. I can stand up in here, no problem. Uh, 
79 square feet of, of fishable space inside this hut. So you also have your mesh storage over here. And then I put in uh, the frayable coat rack so you can hang your, hang your, uh, your jacket, uh, hoodie, anything like that. So I put them one in each corner. And then I have uh, the frayable light bar up top. So you can move, you can pivot these lights in either direction. Um, so it really lights up the inside. Really lights the inside of this hut up nice. So another cool feature that I like about this hut, and you can see it more so on the outside, on the roof, is actually, you can see, what's going on Austin? Uh, you can see that it is um, insulated on the top. So you have some nice insulated material up top, so it traps the heat up top. But as you can see, there's all kinds of room inside this, and this hut's about 300 bucks. Uh, another cool feature I like about this is it actually has, uh, in the corners here, areas that you can, you can store your gear and keep it off the ice. So, you know, if you wanna put your flasher up, up off the ice to save the battery, things like that. Um, hey, what's going on, Casey? Um, you can see on each side here, it's got a spot for you to do that. As I kind of mentioned, you have you have the little coat hanger up here. You got the storage uh, for your you know hats, gloves, uh, gear, that sort of stuff you can put up here. And then I have the light bar, the Frable light bar up here. And as you can see, these, you know, they move back and forth. Um, so you can rotate the light to give you a little more light if you need it. But there's a lot, a lot of space on the inside of this hut. You come to the outside. They've upgraded... They've upgraded the uh, latches to put your rope on the outside, so you have a strong, you have a strong uh, eye bolt right here, and it's also reinforced down here, and you tie your rope off right there. So um, a little less risk of breaking your hub shelter on the actual hub that sits behind here. Um, it just gives you more reinforce against the wind. You also have the flaps that come on the outside here, um, so you can. You can put some snow on the outside to further insulate this hut. Back up a little bit, man. So you can see so try to give you guys, this thing's pretty big, so try to give you guys just a, an overview of what it looks like. So uh, that's, that's kind of the, the first setup that we have. Um, so I'm just going to kind of do another quick walkthrough with you guys. See it's got the reinforced strap on the outside. For your window, you got your vents. You got your storage here. So the next thing we're gonna we're gonna talk about is the I uh, picked up the shields. Show you guys real quick. Picked up uh, the shields Plano rod and tackle storage. So it holds it holds up to six six rod and reels in here. Uh, it's actually, it's 130 bucks. It's on sale right now at Shields for 100 bucks. Amazing deal. When I saw it drop down to 100 bucks, I went online and ordered it. It was shipped to my house within two days. Uh, it comes with, it comes with six uh, Plano tackle boxes. You have uh, a deep Plano tackle box here. Um, you guys, you know, that use power bait or stuff like that. Uh, you can go ahead and, and put your bigger stuff in there. And then it has these um, these 3500 uh, series 
smaller planter boxes that you can put your jigs, spoons, stuff like that in. Um, easy access, it keeps everything safe. You don't have to worry about, you know, um, this stuff getting broken in your, in your sled. Uh, this last weekend I had one of my, one of my boxes get busted by my, uh, by my auger because it went on top and when this plastic gets cold, it breaks a lot easier. Um, so it comes with, it comes with these boxes. So when you buy it, it comes with these six boxes. Shields Outfitter box made by Plano. Um, it's got a little pressure valve here, so if you get too much air, it lets the air out so it doesn't collect moisture. You can see that right here. Um, on sale right now for uh, down from $129.99 to $99.99. Um, so, and it fits up to a 42 inch rod so if you guys that go laker fishing uh, you have those uh, 35 to 42 inch rods they're gonna fit they're gonna fit in this box this box as a whole is 49 is 45 and a half inches when it's closed and um, I can't wait to really get it out I'm gonna put all my gear in here I have another box that I'm gonna put my jaw jackers in um, so it's just a really a really cool awesome box um, and while, while I got this open, I'm just going to talk about um, some jigs that I use um, for those of you guys for those of you guys that ice fish for trout. What about girls? Don't forget about the girls. Yeah, and, and the ladies out there. David, remind me. Can't forget about the ladies that are watching. Um, but these are kind of the tubes that I use. These Berkeley Atomic Teaser tubes. Uh, you know, you guys know I use the trout tacks too. Um, but these have been kind of a staple, these colors here, um, for any trout in Colorado um, on these tube jigs. And then on the back, I have my crawdad imitation bait. So you have your paddlefish by Eagle Claw. Uh, you got your VMC, um, the little crawdad imitations. Um, I think these are just your freshwater basic uh, crawdad and... What we've done is just kind of ripped the tail off on these and just kind of angled it so that the claws sit up like that. So just like a natural crawdad does in, in defense uh, when a trout or a fish or predator, or just a predator in general comes, um, making your baits just kind of as, as real as possible. Then I have some other smaller uh, little crawdad stuffs, but uh, these, these little packs you can pick up at Sportsman's Warehouse. They're made for flies, um, but they're about 15 bucks. Well worth it if you guys use a lot of jigs. Uh, it keeps your jigs uh, dry, clean. Uh, we don't have to worry about the color fading out or mixing with other ones. Um, so we're gonna put that back in there. And then um, we're gonna go ahead and talk about uh, the next item on the list. So actually, let's see what Let's see if we got any comments. Yeah, the rod box is, is amazing. What's going on, Wendell? Yeah, for, I mean, 100 bucks, I, I can easily, I can say with confidence, this is easily the best, the best box, um, ice fishing box that you're going to get for 100 bucks. It holds six, it holds six rods. You can see I got my, 31 inch jaw jacker rod here. Yeah, we're not, we're not giving away the rod locker. That's not part of the uh, giveaway, unfortunately. Uh, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be using it because I'm greedy like that. Um, but the next thing that we're gonna go we're gonna go over. Just get some of this stuff yep. out of the way. I know a lot of you are familiar with just a regular jaw jacker, um, but I'm going to show you guys kind of the different modes and the different ways you can use the jigging jaw jacker. So it comes with comes with three wheels. You have your wiggle wheel. You got the tooth, 
and this is the the tooth is the one I've been using the most. And then you have the big the big jig wheel. So what you do to set this up, it's pretty simple. You have your regular jaw jacker here. The jigging base comes with an extra pin and you just put that in there like that. And then decide which wheel you want. We're gonna start off with the jigging wheel. So we're just gonna turn, make sure you turn it a little bit till it pops in. And you just push it in there. You have the arms that come out. So you can set that base down. As you can see, get it on the table there. It ain't going anywhere. We'll get the rod set up in here. So if a lot of you guys are using like 28 to 31 or 32 inch rods, I always go the third, the third hole here, which would be hole number, hole number five. Um, that's going to have your best, your best hookup uh, with fish. You're going to miss less fish if you're using a rod anywhere from 28 to 30, uh, 28 to 32 inches in length. Put that in there. Is there any comments, David? Yeah. Go ahead and read them out as they come in. Okay. Cody says, hey, yo. <laughs> Cody. <laughs> Had the pleasure of watching Shane, the boys, and Ben use them all. Awesome. Casey? All yeah. Right, yeah. I can. So if you, as we're going along, if you have any questions, go ahead and type them in there. David will shout them out to me, and uh, I'll get to them as soon as possible. But you can see that the jigging base here is set up. It's ready to go. So we're going to set the jaw jacker rod up like so. <laughs> uh, one of the guys want to know, that's pretty sick, but he says, that's like, what kind of witch, witch, witchcraft are you using? <laughs> <laughs> so, hey, he's funny. <laughs> witchcraft. Huh? No, witchcraft yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you turn it on. Uh, there's a little switch back here. You hit it on there. And as you can see, that wiggles, that wiggle base, just like if you were doing a subtle wiggle. You know, the fish is getting real excited, so it's gonna hit it. And as you can see, it sets that sucker off, you come and grab it. Come and grab it, reel in that fish. Uh, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna show you, so that's the wiggle wheel. You just kind of twist and pull for this to come off. We're gonna put the tooth on. So we're going to turn that on, and that's a little bit different of a jigging action. This is the one that I like to use. So it's a little, a little bit more aggressive. Now it stops for a little bit, pauses that bait, gives it a quick little pop pop. Let that play for a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, so, so Zima, you know, pretty much, uh, I mean, that is the point. If, if you have, if you have states where, where you can have multiple lines, like Casey mentioned, um, Idaho, you can have up to five lines per, per person. So, what we did is I had two jigging jaw jackers out, I had two regular jaw jackers out, and then I was personally jigging in a hole by myself. So it allows you to just kind of do different things at once. Um, and you know, a lot of states you can have multiple lines, you know, Colorado you can have up to two lines. So if the jigging bite's going on and maybe you're catching fish jigging um, and you're, you know, your dead stick pole that you have isn't doing nothing. 
Um, this allows you to have another jigging device jigging for you uh, while you yourself are jigging. Just gives you that much more of an opportunity to catch that fish and, and make that memory. Um, but this is kind of, this is the tooth on here. I'm gonna put the, uh, the big jig wheel on. And uh, this big jig wheel, um, you know, is gonna be for if you're using um, a little bit heavier. We got so, a question. So, yeah, Ryan says he makes custom cams for that. That's very interesting. So, do you wanna talk a little bit more about that, Ryan? Ryan who? Quist. Quist? Quist. Custom cans or cams? Uh, the custom cams for that. Mm -hmm. Cams? The cams. Oh. Hmm. That's cool, right? Uh, but this, this big jig wheel is going to be for, um, you know, if you guys are out there, uh, maybe you got a Castmaster, an HDI, something like that that you want to that you want to jig with or you want to jig with two of them or you want to call fish in while you dead stick or have a subtle jig um, this big wheel is going to come in it's going to come in pretty handy for you guys so i'm going to stop this up at the top and then just kind of take this off put this big jig wheel on maybe so I'm going to start it back up and this is going to be the big jig wheel. Actually, there we go. So it's really aggressive. It brings it back down. Kind of gives it a pop pop. It's going to drop it down, drop it down. Bring it back up for that big jig right here. So they come in three different types of wheels, is that correct? Yep, so the three different wheels come with it. So everything you see here, minus the original jaw jacker base, uh, comes, comes with the jigging jaw jacker. So you can buy it in stores. It's uh, $89.99 at Sportsman's Warehouse. It's gonna come with this jigging base. You have a foam piece here that you can put some, some of your jigs and lures on for you. Um, and then it comes with with all three of these jigging bases that you see here, it comes together. And then also um, the spring will be in there. You gotta just kind of put this spring in there um, that allows your this to kind of come down and, and give it that action without setting the jaw jacker up. So it's gonna come with all of that. Um, it does take three AA batteries. Um, now, um, you know, those of you that are like, oh, well, is this gonna die out real quick while you're out there? It's, we were out in 21 below zero weather for two and a half days uh, out there on the water for about 10 hours each day. So we put probably about 25, 26 hours on these jigging jaw jackers on the same batteries at 21 below zero. So for those of you who are you know, kind of concerned that it you know, takes three, three AA batteries, the batteries do last for quite some time. And we got another question. Well, Casey says he loves that last wheel a lot. And Cody uh, Lawhorn, he wants to know, can you vary the speed of the motor? Um, nope. So right now you, can't, you cannot vary the speed of the motor. Um, it's just a con it's the continuous speed. So the only thing that really changes the action of the bait is going to be is going to be the wheel itself. Now, um, you know, down, further down the road, there could be, you know, could be an option for different speeds. Uh, I'm sure that would be an added cost. But right now, um, it's just one, one continuous speed that you guys that you guys see here. It's just a slow kind of spin like that. So David Riegert wants to know: Can you buy a replacement if one of the wheels break? Yeah. So. 
So Job Jacker is really good, guys. So if you guys save your receipt and something happens, uh, one of your wheel, one of your wheels breaks or something like that breaks on the Job Jacker, um, contact Job Jacker's customer service. They've been amazing. So um, as Sean Buckendall uh, can attest to. Um, he had one of the plastic on one of his arms broke uh, or on the trigger piece. They couldn't send him a, another trigger piece, so they sent him a full piece right here at no charge to Sean. Um, so uh, Jawjacker stands behind, uh, does a great job standing behind their products. Um, and uh, so there's, you guys don't have to worry about that if, if something breaks. Um, you know, if it breaks because of the cold or something like that, they'll replace it. Now, obviously, you know, if it breaks uh, because you're abusing the product um, or, you know, being careless with it, um, you know, then that definitely wouldn't qualify. Um, but uh, we'll just kind of let this on for a little bit. You guys can look at it. I'm going to get the what everybody's waiting for to see what this big prize is that we're giving away. So I'm going to go get some stuff, put it on the table here. <laughs> at my sin school <laughs> and well Ryan uh, <laughs> doesn't really look like you're learning too much if you're on here watching us um, so guys um, you know those of you who are thinking about investing in one of these bases I got good news for you because everything you see on the table right here you have a um, a 30 inch medium heavy uh, bro bro series rod and reel combo right here you have uh, the jaw jacker so you have the original base the jigging base you got the frable safety kit so you got your um, you got your spikes there and you got your creepers for walking on the ice we got some frable sub-zero multi-purpose lubricant uh, for your reels Two packs of trout attacks, Lucky 7 bait pen, uh, the one that's in the video here, uh, I just kind of used to show you guys, but it won't be the one going out to you, and then uh, an HD ice. So yeah, Jason, it, it really would be. So um, what you guys need to do to get an extra entry to win this prize pack, hey, what's going on, Jeff? Um, so comment on the live video and like and share this live video will get you an extra entry uh, to win everything everything right here so this is a this is about two hundred fifty three hundred dollars uh, worth of stuff that we're giving away here um, as a thanks you know end of the year uh, Christmas giveaway um, you know we're all about promoting and using our stuff that our sponsors give us. Um, we want to give back to you guys who've been watching um, watching our videos, liking and stuff like that. There will be another post um, that I'll be doing, uh, which is going to be um, sharing, you know, sharing some fish that you've caught through the ice. Um, and, and that's going to be the main post that's going to get you entered. Um, but those of you guys who are watching right now, um, this is going to be an, a way for you to get an extra entry um, to win all of this stuff that you see right here, minus the hut in the background. But 
Um, you have the Bro Series 30 inch medium heavy rod. It's a great rod for trout, walleye, um, through the ice. These reels are really nice ice reels. Probably my favorite ice reel um, that there is. And I've, I've owned quite a few. You got a little ice safety kit for you guys too. The Sub-Zero um, keeps, keeps your stuff, protects your gear from cold and moisture all the way down to 60 below. Brook Trout HD Ice, the Glow Trout Attack, and then an orange pack. Um, so, and then obviously the Jaw Jacker and, and the Jigging Base. Um, so, that's kind of where we're at with that. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and kind of swap around and uh, kind of chit chat with you guys for a little bit. Uh, I know a bunch of you have been on the ice, um, so let's hear, you know, kind of what's been working for you guys out on the ice. Uh, what what lures, um, you know, is there a technique, a water depth that you're that you've been fishing at that's been working for you this year? Um, let's just share let's share a few things for a couple more minutes. Just kind of uh, talk about ice fishing season. I'll go over some. Stuff that I look for fishing for trout uh, when I go to a new lake. Um, as Casey mentioned, uh, myself, Ben, and Casey went up to Idaho and fished a body of water we've never fished before. Uh, Casey caught a nice, uh, you know, seven, eight pound fish, real beautiful cut bow. Um, I caught a nice Yellowstone cutthroat. We caught plenty of fish. Uh, we caught probably uh, three or four different species of fish. We caught brook trout. Uh, cut bows, Yellowstone cutthroats um, through the ice. So I'm just going to kind of move this stuff around a little bit and give you guys another overview. Come on, camera. There we go. I'm trying to trying to switch this around. Yeah, Atomic Teaser Tubes, amazing, amazing tubes. I've been using them for years. Uh, love, love using the Atomic Teaser Tubes. Um, let's see. All right, Jason says, two weeks in a row, shallows on sandy bottoms or weed beds. That's perfect, yep. If you're fishing Antero, uh, there used to be probably one of my favorite one of my favorite lakes in Colorado to go fish before I moved to Wyoming. Um, Wendell says Antero was good with the trout attack and shrimp scent. Very nice. And Sean, his most successful tactic is not falling through. Well, that's a pretty good tactic. Uh, you don't want to fall through the ice because then you're not fishing, and that's a very poor tactic. And you don't want to be bad at life and fall through the ice. So, um, David Reeker says, I know Antero really well. That's not a lie. Uh, Cody always has his jaw jacker. Um, John Chambers, I uh, used the Lucky 7 pen and shrimp and original scents on trout attack this past weekend and caught a personal best brookie. Nice, man. Congrats. I uh, got to watch it all with my underwater camera uh, that I used for the first time. And let me see. I need to see more because the lake was very shallow, two to three feet deep. Wow. That's pretty cool. Brook trout through the ice are awesome. Uh, yeah, the HD ice is amazing. We caught, uh, we caught quite a few uh, smaller cutthroats um, on the brook trout pattern. Uh, no monsters. Ben missed a pretty good fish uh, that did a swing and a miss. 
Um, Jeff says he loves his pink and white tungsten number eight clam jigs. Um, let's see. I'm torn between there and 11 mile. Hey, you know, uh, you know what, Jason? Sometimes going to 11 mile, um, <clears throat> you know, the Stoll Mountain area of 11 mile, going out finding that six to eight feet of water is all you really need to do. Uh, white or pink tubes. Uh, you can tip them with a mealworm if you want, um, but uh, sometimes you know getting in those less pressured areas like 11 mile. Uh, I've been seeing a lot of good fish coming out of 11 mile um, early this year, um, and you always have a chance at pike. There's also perch in there, um, and if you're extremely lucky, you'll get you'll get into some uh, you'll get into some smallmouth too um, up there. So. Yeah, Cody Long, tip with shrimp. Yeah, so uh, <clears throat> those of you guys who fish Antero and lakes like that that you can use bait, um, if you go to the pet store, I'm going to let you in on a little secret. You go to the pet store and pick up some krill in the package. Uh, those krill uh, work amazing to tip. Uh, it's probably my favorite. If I'm going to tip anything with bait, it's going to be that krill. Um, Josh wants to know, he's heading to an Antero in the morning. Um, so Jeff real quick, or, jo or Josh, sorry. Um, Josh, if you're heading to an Antero in the morning, uh, my suggestion for you uh, would be to, um, well, it's during the week, it shouldn't be too crowded, but uh, if you fish uh, anywhere along the dam and maybe find an edge line of the weeds in that deep water, um, that usually that usually does pretty good um, if not um, off of any of those boat ramps um, if you have an underwater camera this will help but if you can find some like holes in the weeds or even if it's just a narrow gap in the weeds uh, let's just say you have like a two foot gap in the weeds there's tall weeds in each side uh, set up on that on that gap and Antero uh, pink tubes are going to be are going to be good uh rat finkies uh pink rat finkies uh work pretty good tip with a mealworm at antero uh you can also use you can also use the uh krill as well um but um you know if you're fishing on top of weeds uh what i like to do with the trout attack is i will just kind of work that bait like you would see like an insect kind of hopping hopping on the weeds come down come up hop a little bit and um, work its way back down to the weeds. Um, early morning, uh, you're gonna get a lot of fish kind of just under the ice, the same thing um, towards, if you stay out there all day and you fish till um, sundown, um, those fish get real active right underneath the ice. Um, you'll see them kind of cruise in. Um, you know, I would stick to that six to eight feet of water at Antero. Um, and if the bite slows down, don't be afraid to move. Even if it's 20 or 30 feet, if it gets crowded, move away from the crowds. Find that same structure. Um, you know, look at a map. Look where you see creek channels coming in. Find those creek channels. Um, fish on the edges or the mouths of those creek channels away from the crowds. Uh, and I guarantee you'll have better success and catch bigger fish if you do that. Um, especially at Antero. Uh, Jeff says Wheatland 3 is one of my favorite lakes. Uh, that's where I might be going this weekend. Um, Cody Longhorn can't find any big fish. Um, you know, sometimes uh, as Antero gets more and more in pressure, you just have to move further and further out. Um, a little hint that I'll give you, if you move west and find deeper water again, you'll find the bigger fish at Antero. Uh, midday bite has been good just below the ice, uh, two feet below the ice. Yep. Um, if, you know, if, if stuff slows down uh, in the middle of the day, don't be afraid to throw a spoon or an HD ice um, if you're, and move the deeper water. Find anything over 10 feet and don't be afraid to just jig that, you know, two to four feet below the ice and just really rip that, rip that bait and have another bait kind of further down, maybe two feet off the bottom. Um, a lot of times they'll call in those fish um, that kind of moved out into that deeper water. But I always start shallow anywhere from, this might sound crazy to some of you guys, but um, you know, two feet under the ice, two feet of water, two to five feet. Um, I usually start off there first thing in the morning and then about 10 o'clock or so, I'll kind of venture out between that eight to 12 feet of water. 
Uh, those fish usually cruise shallow early in the morning, and as the day progresses, they move back, they move out, and then in the afternoon to kind of come back. Uh, Pink says, Pink has always been my good to go to, killing it. Um, Tom says, Custom jigs and spin rat finkies. Um, David Reeker says, Cross Creek's been on fire. Uh, mealworms, shrimp. Uh, let's see. David Reeker says, Buddy caught three cokes. Oh, that's pretty cool, man. Uh, let's see. Um, uh, she's working. Caught a fish dead sticking in HD ice last weekend. That's pretty funny. Alona Ava HD ice never caught anything. Larry, um, I made a video last week or week before last on how to jig the HD ice, different techniques on how to jig the HD ice, different times of the day. I'm gonna post it on the YouTube channel. So, um, you're gonna see a lot more of our videos being posted on YouTube. Um, trying to grow our YouTube. So. Those of you guys that are watching, um, I'm going to give you another chance to get an extra entry into, um, into that prize pack. So if you want an extra entry um, on top of liking and sharing this live feed right now, um, go ahead over to the Recon Angling YouTube page and subscribe. Uh, if you subscribe, I will go there and I'll be able to see who is subscribed to our channel. If you are subscribed, uh, you will get an and you will get an extra entry um, into winning uh, any, winning that prize pack. So um, Jason says the Maniac Custom Lures Ice Cutter, one and a half. Uh, that's his go-to. I'm going to grab my box real quick. So <clears throat> I'll show you kind of what, what I got in my box here. So these are atomic teaser, combinations of atomic teaser tubes, um, trout traps, and a few, and a few others. And I saw that, John, thank you for that. Um, so you see these white atomic teasers, I usually take those orange tails out and put pink. Um, you have the pink and white, the pink and white atomic teaser. I probably caught between this one and the brown one with the chartreuse tail that I that I kind of custom combined. Um, I've caught big trout all over the place on those. Um, so I'll let you guys kind of take a peek at that. Um, so one thing I've been do one thing I've been doing this year is on the jigging jaw jacker, and I showed you guys earlier is is putting this uh, this crawdad has been bit up, um, but. I'll put this crawdad, move it away here. I'll put this crawdad on the jigging jaw jacker in like three feet of water and just let it kind of, let it go off the bottom. And you can see, maybe you can't, I'll try to move my camera here. You can see on my hand how it kind of sits up with the claws up. So kind of like, kind of like what the, uh, what crawdads do, um, you know, in the wild for defense is they're gonna have these claws up like this. So I've been putting this on the jigging jaw jacker um, with the tooth wheel and it kind of pops it up and then it flutters down side to side um, like say, um, like a real crawdad, man, I can't talk today. Um, yeah, hey Cody, these, these fly boxes for ice fishing jigs, uh, Cody or uh, Jeremy, Romero, um, those of you guy who know he's my partner with Recon Angling. Um, hey, thanks, Jason. Hey, thanks, Larry. Um, he's the one that actually came up with this idea. And I'm like, man, I'm like that really keeps your stuff organized and, and neat. You can see in the box um, as stuff's flying around. Um, it keeps everything nice and neat. It keeps it out of the elements. Um, and it's easy to just kind of, you know, take stuff in and out. And move and move it around um, but on that jigging on a jigging jaw jagger having this crawdad right there we've been killing killing trout um, you know most of the lakes in Colorado the main source of food for these trout besides insects is going to be crawdads um, so why not have a crawdad you know an easy meal for that fish um, in shallow water where you're gonna find a majority of the crawdads anyway um, has been working pretty good um, 
Yep. The, yeah. So yeah, you have yeah you have the chartreuse that, or just you know the pinks and whites will bleed will will blend into each other and this kind of you can keep them you can keep them separated um, so that doesn't happen. Thanks, Jeff. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna get more videos we're gonna get more videos up on on YouTube. Um, you know, probably eventually you're gonna go ahead and start going live on YouTube um, and doing giveaways and stuff like that. Um, off of YouTube, so uh, just make sure you guys are subscribed for the future. Uh, like I said tonight, if you're watching, it's a good night because um, you guys kind of saw what you're what you're going to have a chance to win three hundred dollars worth of ice fishing gear, um, and also you got two extra entries to win. So like, like, comment, and share um, the live video, and then go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube page. Um, we're gonna try to get some cool videos up there, um, getting some cool AquaView uh, cameras um, here in the spring. Um, they have some trolling adapters that allows you uh, to put these cameras down, um, you know, by your downrigger ball and stuff like that. And um, I think we're gonna really be able to make some really cool videos of how fish react to lures, um, different speeds and stuff like that. Um, yeah, the cross could work good at Antero if you're fishing up by the dam or, um, you know, shallow waters by the boat ramp. Um, you should be able to do pretty good. Um, I have, if you, so these are, I think, Lost Creek. You can get them at uh, Sportsman's Warehouse, these Lost Creek crawdads. Um, but then there's also these little tiny crawdads, um, which are pretty cool if you're intimidated by using a little bit bigger bait. Um give you guys an idea some of the trout I was catching a couple weeks ago um, you'd pull they were so fat you'd get them up through the ice and they were pooping out crawdads you know uh, claws about the size of this crawdad so don't be afraid to use something a little bit bigger especially if you're looking for those bigger fish you know I know a lot of guys at 11 mile Antero uh, catch a lot of big fish on smaller baits uh, like the rat finkies and stuff like that but don't be afraid don't be afraid to put a bigger a bigger crawdad um, on there. Um, you know, it's probably going to pay off for you. Um, so Michael wants to know if we ordered the hats uh, yet. No, we have we have not. Um, we've just kind of we've hit a snag in um, design. Um, there was some stuff that quite wasn't right on the patches on the hats. So. Um, they're redoing the hat, so I didn't want to get something out there that wasn't done correct. Um, so we're hoping to have those, um, you know, by the first of the year. It's taken a lot longer than we expected, um, just because we switched to a different hat manufacturer. Um, so, yeah, Cody bought a new boat. What did you get? Thanks. <clears throat> but yep, yeah, that's a little package. It's uh, I don't even know what brand this is. Uh, they're over by the fly fishing section at Sportsman's. They're uh, about fifteen fifty a pop. Um, so it's you can fit a lot of stuff in there. It's it's great uh, for ice fishing, especially if you just want to throw something in your pocket and just kind of walk around. It's a great case to have. Um, I do not I do not tip the crawdads. I sent them with the uh, crawdad set and that's been working pretty good um, So I haven't really I haven't had I haven't had to uh, haven't had to tip them um, Yet anyway, let's see there we go. I'm gonna tilt this sucker down a little bit Yep, and, and you know Thanks for being patient, those of you guys who kind of pre-ordered the hats. Um, we just want to make sure we have something that you guys are going to like, and it's going to be it's going to be right. We don't want to rush something and have it be junky. So, um, <clears throat> anyway, um, I think that's gonna I think that's gonna do it. Let's see if Cody replies back on what kind of boat he got. I'm interested to see what. I know it was quite the ordeal looking at boats going to South Dakota, stuff like that, without getting one. But yep, the fly box is the way to go. 
Hey, no problem, Jeff. Uh, you know, I'm gonna try to get live more while we're fishing. I need to, I need to get some mounts off of Amazon that I can, so I'm not putting my phone in the, uh, in the, in the snow. Um, just kind of show you guys how we're fishing, what we're doing while we're live out there fishing. I mean, sharing information like this with you guys is fine. Um, as some of you know, like I prefer to be out on the water, physically showing you guys, hey, this is what we're doing. This is why we're successful. This is why we're not. So we switch up stuff. Um, um, so Kelly, they do not. We don't sell the scent pens um, in any stores yet. So there will not be any scent pens in the stores until after um, until after I see. So after January twelfth um, is when the scent pens. So they're the ones that are available online. They're still working prototypes. Uh, we're working out um, some stuff, getting them in the hands of you guys. So if you do order them, use them. If there's something you don't that you don't like about the pen, um, you know, let us know so we can change it. So the final product that comes out is is a refined, finished product for you guys. Um, we're working on some holders for the scent pens. Um, since most of them are water based, they do freeze if you you know leave them in your sled. I usually keep mine in my pocket so it doesn't freeze. Um, but we're working on a little holder that goes around your neck that you can put it in so it keeps it close to your body and keeps it warm so it doesn't freeze up on you. Um, yeah, Sean ordered them online, had them the next day. Uh, those of you guys who live in Denver, you're probably going to get them within a day or two um, as long as I-70 is not shut down in the mountains. Um, John wants to know, do those tubes dry out when you store them in the fly box? I keep my, my jigs in one, never thought about tubes. Um, no, I haven't really had my, the, they've been in there for about a year now and they're still, they're still fine. They haven't dried up or anything. Um, yep, they, they're, they're amazing. Um, honestly, I don't know why it took us this long to think about coming out with the pens. Um, and then a lot of the scents, <coughs> a lot of this, <coughs> excuse me, a lot of the scents that we made were stuff that we came up and we engineered ourselves. So it wasn't a scent that we knocked off or took from somebody else. It's something that we, um, that we kind of made ourselves in, um, lack of better terms, engineered, um, you know, specifically the Mac attack is a combination of scents and uh, it has been probably one of my favorite besides the krill and the shrimp. Um, the Mac attack has worked literally for everything. Lake trout, um, I used it for walleye, um, I've used it for um, rainbows, browns, cutthroats, cut bows. <coughs> I'm just going to steal some of his. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there you go Kelly. What's going on, Gary? Yeah, you can go ahead and steal some of Sean's. He won't. He won't mind. Um, <laughs> kick me off. Well, yeah. I mean, you are banned from winning stuff, but you. Know, however, Sean, I think. Uh, <clears throat> I think for this big prize, um, I think I'll. Anybody who's won before is open to win this. To win this big prize, it is such a big prize. Um, you know, for you guys. Uh, and it's just a way for us to kind of just say thanks for following us and putting up with our antics while we're live. Um, and just kind of a way for us to celebrate uh, celebrate and give back to you guys that follow us. Um, so, um, yep. <laughs> Yeah, keeping your pocket under the bibs is probably the best the best strategy right now since the water base does freeze. Um, you know, even our oil. One thing I wanted to explain is even our oil based um, stuff. Uh, most oil based scents don't really dissolve or separate in water. They just kind of glob up and don't move. Our scent does disperse a lot more than um, any other oil base that you're going to find out there. Um, these pens, even the oil-based ones that we make, um, separate a lot more um, than, than any of the other ones out there. Um, the water base is going to dissolve. You're going to find yourself putting a little bit more on you know, every 10 or 15 minutes. However, if you feel the bait over time, you'll feel that the bait actually soaks up some of that water-based um, water scent. So um, you don't want to overdo it either. Um, 
So there you go. David's got all the sense he's going to share. I'll just use one. <laughs> I'll just use the one I'm going to win. All right, there we go. That's what we want to hear. Um, <clears throat> so anyway, guys, um, I'm going to try to go live this weekend while I'm out ice fishing um, and just kind of uh, maybe show you guys, you know, what I'm using, the depths of water I'm fishing at, how the fish are reacting. Uh, we'll get the hut set up. Um, and then hopefully uh, really get into filming and you guys can just kind of watch live. The issue is a lot of places I go, I don't get service. So um, I got Verizon, which has service pretty much everywhere. However, the Good Lakes, it seems, do not have service on them. Or if it does, it's super spotty. And the live feed looks like it's from 1980 MTV. So uh, no one wants to watch that. Uh, let's see... There you go. But anyway, guys, uh, thanks for thanks for checking us out. I'm gonna take a picture of everything that you guys have an opportunity to win, and uh, you'll see a post in the next couple days. Um, you guys just follow directions on that, along with um, what I talked about in the live video to get your extra entries in. Um, so you should have an opportunity to have um, you know an extra three entries. And when you post the pictures, we are going to pick a picture that we feel represents um, ice fishing. Um, so get creative on your pictures that you post because um, that's going to give you whoever wins the, the picture is going to get an extra five entries. Um, so I'm going to work out the details on that. Um, when I do the post, just follow the directions. Uh, we're going to pick uh, we're going to pick. A picture that best represents what ice fishing means as a fisherman and uh, that person's going to get an extra five entries on top of the three so they could potentially have eight entries uh, into there so um, you know like I said if you guys have questions um, go ahead ask them on the post ask them on the videos uh, we'll try to get as as in depth as possible without blowing up lakes or giving away too many secrets. Um, you know, I feel like sometimes we learn the best when we go ahead and put forth our own effort, trials and tribulations. But we're definitely here to help you kind of um, cut the edge, so to speak, kind of like whiskey does uh, when you're having after a long day. That whiskey just cuts the edge off a little bit for you. So that's kind of what we're trying to do, uh, fishing wise, for you guys. Um, <clears throat> Jeff, the drawing's going to be, uh, probably going to do the drawing, uh, next Wednesday, I would say is when we're going to do it. Um, so you, we, I may do it sooner. Um, I'm going to kind of look at shipping and, you know, see if we can get this stuff to you guys, um, before Christmas. That way you can, those of you guys who are off after Christmas can use it, um, during that break. So, uh, just look for that drawing. We're probably going to do it next Wednesday. Um, that way it gives me some time to get that stuff shipped out to you guys. <coughs> um, so anyway, I uh, hope you guys have a good night and um, we'll catch you we'll catch you out on the water and then those of you guys who are going fishing before I get to go back out this weekend, uh, good luck and tight lines.